Magandang gabi sa inyo mga buddy. So today is July 3, 2021 at matagal-tagal din tayo na ano no, hindi tayo nakapag-update about sa Taal. So yung ating last update ay noong July 1. So dalawang araw na nakalipas. At ngayon nga ay mag, uh, karoon tayo ng isang update. Talakayin natin itong ipinalabas ng Fivox na advisory kaninang alas 8 ng gabi. At ito nga ay tungkol sa SO2 emission ni Taal na naitala. At may tatalakayin tayo na isang artikulo na kung saan ito ay nabanggit na rin ni May G. World dun sa kanyang post tung isang araw. Kung inyong natatandaan, before na magkaroon ng priyato magmatic eruption or explosion itong si Taal. Kung ano yung mga naging assessment ni May G. World yung mga ipinaparating niya sa atin, yung mga ipinopost niya, halos nandun lahat. Ipapakita ko rin sa inyo yung artikulo na to upang sa ganun ay uh, mabasa ninyo. Ilalagay natin yung kanyang link sa description ng video na to at ipopost din natin ito sa ating uh, Facebook page. Okay, so para at least uh, meron tayong ano, uh, idea kung ano ba yung nangyari noong uh, January 12, 2020 kay Taal Volcano bago siya magkaroon ng uh, priatic and priato magmatic eruption. So wala muna tayo ngayon, ano, no? wala muna tayong... Uh, shout out kasi mahaba-haba itong ating pag-uusapan at ayoko naman na kayo ay uh, mainip sa panonood dito sa ating vlog. So dito tayo sa Fibox at tingnan natin yung ipinalabas na advisory. This is a notice of high volcanic SO2 gas emission from Taal Volcano. The highest levels of volcanic sulfur dioxide or SO2 gas emission and tall steam rich plumes from the main crater have been recorded today. SO2 emission average 14,699 tons per day. So, hindi lang yan kasi may mga na-dissolve pa sa tubig. The highest ever recorded in Taal while upwelling in the main crater lake generated steam plumes that rose 2,500 meters above Volcano Island. So, SO2 emission may be succeeded by eruptive activity at the main crater similar to increases in SO2 flux of 14,326 and 13,287 tons per day on June 28 and the morning of July 1, 2021 respectively that preceded the short-lived Priyato Magmatic Eruption at 3.16pm of July 1. Usually, ang Fibox, naglalabas sila ng bulletin every 8 o'clock a.m. Pero ito, uh, pinauna nila itong advisory na to kasi nga napansin nila na uh, napakataas nitong uh, SO2 na to kasi baka maulit yung nangyari noong July 1 na kung saan ay nagkaroon ng uh, priyato magmatic explosion si Taal. Kaya po patuloy na nagpapaalala at ang inire-recommend ng Fibox doon sa mga high-risk barangay ay magsilikas muna yung mga tao. Yung ipitalabas ng Fibox na bulletin, nagkaroon ng 3 short priyato magmatic burst. So ano lang to, uh, mahihina lang to. At around uh, 10.25, 10.47, and 11.01 a.m. Tapos, meron siyang 48 volcanic earthquakes, may 2 volcano tectonic earthquakes, at merong 40 low-frequency volcanic earthquakes. So, in total, 48 yon Isama mo pa yung 6 volcanic tremor events na may uh, duration na 4 minutes. Okay? So, yung kanyang SO2 emission ay 10,254. Naitala ito kahapon, okay, July 2. At ngayong July 3 ay nasa 14,699 na. So, dito sa ipinalabas ng ABS-CBN na balita, so ito ay 9.26pm, no? Fivox records highest levels of sulfur dioxide at all, eruptive activity possible. So, yan po yung paalala ng Fivox. At ang nandito sa unahan ay State Seismology Agency Fivox on Saturday recorded the highest levels of sulfur dioxide emitting from Taal Volcano at 14,699 tons which it said could signal another eruption similar to what happened on Thursday. Ito yung sinasabi ni My G World. Itong galing sa Advancing Earth and Space Science kung saan ang title ay the 2020 Eruption and Large Lateral Dike Emplacement at Taal Volcano, Philippines. Ito yung insights from satellite radar data. At mapapansin nyo dito yung mga authors. Si, ito si MG Bato, P. Langren, V. Pinel, R. Solidum Jr. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ito ay kasama ang Fivox dito sa uh, paggawa uh, nitong uh, studies na to at ito ay na first published noong 22 March 2021 so ngayon lang 
taon na to. So, sinasabi dito mga body sa plain language summary, the album kayo in the Philippines erupted on January 12, 2020. Here we present the pre- co and post eruption data model and analysis using interferometric synthetic aperture radar or yung INSAR data acquired by various satellite systems we find that prior to the eruption the volcano experiences a sequence of long term or greater than one year depletion so may uh, uh, depressurization at natawag or yung deflation followed by short term less than or equal to one year inflation naman as a result of the depressurization pressurization alam nyo ba na ang magma reservoir ay nasa less than 5 km depth at ito yung sinasabi palagi ni May sa kanya mga post na yung magma chamber ni Taal or yung magma reservoir ay nasa uh, less than 5 km number 2 during the eruption the magma reservoir lost a volume of ito 0.531 yan cubic kilometer ito yung pangatlo post eruption analysis revealed that the magma reservoir is in recovery starting 3 weeks after the main eruptive phase so may nawalang uh, volume doon sa magma reservoir pumunta sa dike at after 3 weeks ay nagkaroon uli ng recovery ibig sabihin siguro uh, bumalik yung dating volume ng magma reservoir after 3 weeks dito naman sa introduction mga body uh, ito yung description tungkol kay Taal so Taal Volcano is a caldera located in southwestern Luzon Island in the Philippines May uh, 33 known historical eruptions Volcano is part of the Makulod Corridor A complex northeast southwest Trending 50 to 60 km wide rift zone So tinapaliwanag na rin natin yan Sa tulong ni MyG World Yung tungkol dito sa uh, Makulod Corridor So characterized by active volcanism Crustal thinning Extensive faulting and black rotation Geophysical studies reveal The presence of a large hydrothermal system At 2.5 kilometers depth below the main crater. So, yung hydrothermal system uh, na, na nakapwesto sa itaas ng uh, magma reservoir ay 2.5 kilometers lang yung lalim niya. Sitting above a magmatic body. Ayan, yung magmatic body. Eruptions are controlled by local tectonics, magma reservoir water interactions. So, yung nangyari noong July 1, ito yung magma reservoir water interactions explosion. So, halimbawa dito, nakaka-apekto dito daw ay rainwater, groundwater, and seawater that can result in different eruption styles and wide range of explosivity. Silipin natin ito maigi mga body para makita nyo ko yung mga fault lines, no? Dito mismo sa tabi ng taal. So, ito yung makulod corridor na tinatawag. Ito, nandito sa part na to. Ito yung mga fault sa crater rim ni taal. Ayan o, no? or caldera rim. Ibig sabihin nito, falls, yung red line, at ito yung caldera rim, ito naman, yan. Tagaytay Ridge, yan yung pinaka-labi niya. At dito sa may parte ng uh, alitagtag. So, itong PRV, ibig sabihin nito ay Pansipit River Valley. Isa sa fault line na laging sinasabi ni Bay, yung laging binabanggit. Sisilipin natin mamaya, may kahalagahan kasi itong fault line na to, itong malapit sa Pansipit River na tumatagos dito sa Balayan Bay. Papunta dito sa Taal Volcano Island. 2019 pa lang, nagkaroon na ng abnormal condition itong si Taal. No? Alert level 0 to alert level 1. Then 2019, naglabas ng advisory. Kaya hindi natin masasabi na ang FIVOX ay walang ginawa or hindi nagpaalala noong 2020 before that nagkaroon na sila ng mga advisory at ito nga January 12 nagkaroon na ng uh, pagsabog si Taal priatic to uh, priato magmatic eruption niya so dito naman sa number 2 yung data methods nakalagay kasi dito yung uh, pre-eruptive data set co-eruptive uh, data set at saka itong post-eruptive number 3 or itong uh, crisis response story so during the peak of eruption monitoring instrument installed on volcano island were either destroyed or temporarily stopped operating SAR data delivered with low latency were essential in understanding the state of the volcano and in guiding FIVOX to forecast possible eruption scenarios as the event progressed so on January 12 we initiated a crisis response by producing interferograms using available data sets at that time. So, tinulungan nila ang VBOX para ano, para mamonitor talaga itong si Taal. Okay, so ito yung mga ipinadala nila siguro sa VBOX, itong mga nasa image na to. Ito yung ipinost natin kanina. Ang sinasabi na lateral dike ni Taal. At ito dito rin ang laging sinasabi ni My Geo World doon sa kanya mga post na mula dito sa Balayan Bay, yung sinasabi na magma chamber, dito dumaan ang uh, magma dito nag diking. Ayan. Kaya sinabing lateral kasi ito yung Taal Volcano Island. Kumbaga nasa 
parehas na gilid niya. So, ito ay northeast southwest trend. No? Ito yung uh, southwest, ito yung northeast. Number four, the pre-eruptive state location and geometry of the magma storage. From the inversion, we found a northeast southwest striking ellipsoidal body located at less than 5 kilometers depth slightly east of Volcano Island. Yun na yung tinuro ko kanina sa inyo doon sa image, no? O yung ipinos ko na rin. And uh, geodetic studies of the Al Volcano also showed a reservoir at roughly similar depth and location. So, parehas lang. Although with a spherical shape chamber. Ayan. Then, number five, itong magma withdrawal and dike emplacement. Itong bahagi na itong basahin natin. Two distinct signals emerge. Number one, Volcano Island and the north and east portion of the Alcaldera experienced deflation of less than 4 meters and number 2, the southwest region from Taal Volcano Island toward Balayan Bay inflated and pulled apart within the center of the northeast southeast trending reef located near the Pacific River. In Volcano Geodesy studies, this signal suggests magma withdrawal from a reservoir and magma emplacement through dike intrusion. So mula doon sa reservoir na nandito sa ilalim, itong magma umakyat at nagkaroon ng dike intrusion so dito sa sinasabi sa number 1 yung north and east portion ng Taal Caldera nagkaroon ng pagbaba nagkaroon ng deflation na less than 4 meters at yung southwest na kung saan yung region na kung saan malapit dito sa may Balayan Bay nagkaroon naman ng pagtaas kaya yun ang naging cause mga body nung ground fissuring na naganap sa Agoncillo, Lemery, uh, Laurel area Nagitak-gitak yung mga lupa dyan At yung iba nagkaroon ng sinkhole So yun ang uh, dahilan Yung magma mula dito sa may Balayan Bay Pumunta, dumaan dito sa may uh, Pansipit River Valley At habang papunta naman doon sa Taal Volcano Island Ito na yung uh, binanggit ko kanina This indicates that only small percentage of the magma withdrawn from the reservoir Came from the short term accumulation period The model also revealed that it 21 by 8 kilometers near vertical northeast striking dike was intruded below the surface from volcano island extending southwestward toward balayan bay the northeast southwest trending ground fissures that emerged in the municipalities of Agoncillo, Lemery, San Nicolas, Taal, and Talisay match the result of our dike model mula dito sa balayan bay papunta or packet sa northeast portion ni Taal Volcano ha, dito dumaan yung magma Dito nagkaroon ng intrusion. Kaya itong mga nandito sa parte natin ng Agoncillo ay nagkaroon ng ground fissuring. For Taal's case, its less than 5 to 6 kilometers deep shallow reservoir became unstable and ruptured due to a small magma input during the short term accumulation period. So small magma input pa lang yan. Taal has a history of frequent seismovolcanic crisis and or surface activity which are interpreted as repeated magma recharge of its shallow reservoir. The sudden magma injection in 2019 might have been due to the pressure imbalance induced depressurization of the shallow storage zone. So as the magma reservoir accumulated pressure, it also interacted with the overlying hydrothermal reservoir. So ganito rin yung nangyayari ngayon. Kasi nagkaroon na nga ng water uh, magma interaction, di ba? Yung sinasabi nga ng Febox. Ito mga body, yung last part ng uh, discussion. Uh, combining all these pieces of evidence, we conclude. Ito yung pinakamahalaga dito eh. Para at least eh, makita natin ano. We conclude that the Taal 2020 volcanic crisis did not result in an eruption. So hindi pa daw pala yun nag sa pagputok despite its history and potential of creating large and destructive events simply because there was a insufficient pressure to drive the magma upward and hence it remained stalled at depth. Nakatigil lang siya doon sa kalaliman. Eruptions in the main crater and ground fissuring related to dike intrusions or fault adjustments were reported in the past. Although the 2020 crisis was not highly destructive, the past eruptions closest to this event were probably those in 1749 and 1911 which were categorized VEI 3 to 4 events. So both eruptions were characterized by violent preatomagmatic or plinian eruptions in the main crater while northeast southwest striking ground fissures at the northern part of the volcano reaching as far as Kalamba. So yun yung nangyari noong 
1749 to 1911. So lessons learned, number 7. Taal is closely monitored volcano consists of multi-parametric network of ground instruments. This is the first time that comprehensive and well-documented INSAR derived displacement maps, time series analysis and deformation model modeling of Taal's pre, co, and post eruptive state are presented. Napakalaki po ng tulong ng ating mga eksperto sa ibang bansa para magkaroon ng ganitong pag-aaral dahil uh, alam naman natin na kapos or walang kapabilidad ang ating gobyerno or ang FIVOX sa mga ganitong studies. Kaya dapat ay talagang nakikipag-coordinate ang ating ahensya sa uh, ibang bansa sa mga eksperto para sa ganito na mga time para at least ay makapagbigay ng research or makapagbigay ng talagang nangyayari kay Taal Volcano. Nakita natin yung mga figure, yung mga image na ipinakita dito sa studies na to. Talagang doon natin masasabi na itong mga sinasabi ni My GU World ay halos na lahat ay tumutugma dito sa studies na to. Kaya sana po tayo ay patuloy na maging mapagmatsyag dahil nga si Taal Volcano sa panahon na ito ay uh, very unstable at dahil nga sa pagkakaroon ng uh, mataas na SO2 emission ngayong araw na to posible uling maulit yung priyato magmatic explosion noong July 1 so sana po may natutunan kayo dito sa ating uh, uh, pinalabas dito sa ating uh, episode at uh, kung gusto nyo na mabasa yung buong artikulo na ito ilalagay ko sa description ng video na to at ipopost din natin sa ating Facebook page so muli Maging mapagmatsyag po tayo, maging alert. Huwag muna po tayo magpasaway, sumunod muna tayo sa ahensya upang sa ganun ay mas uh, maging ligtas yung ating sitwasyon, lalo na dun sa mga high risk barangay. At ipagdasal din natin na sana ay huwag nang tuluyan na magkaroon uli ng uh, major eruption itong si Taal Volcano dahil alam naman natin na walang ibang magdurusa kundi yung ating mga kababayan. Pero ang uh, pinaka the best sa ngayon ay maging handa tayo sumunod at magdasal. Muli ito niyo supremo. See you next time mga buddy.